Hello, and welcome back to Battle Plan, a podcast focused on spiritual warfare. I'm Steve Hemphill. Uh, I'd like to invite you to visit our website at active-faith.org and email me with any spiritual warfare questions, stevehemphill1 at me.com. Last time, we reviewed the uh, no suicide stake verses. Today, I have an awesome story about God's word being successful in helping a mental health issue. Uh, we'll call this episode agoraphobic for 22 years. Let me share a couple of Bible verses before I tell you the story. Matthew 8, 28 and 29 NLT says, when Jesus arrived on the other side of the lake in the region of the Gadarenes, two men who were possessed by demons met him. They came out of the tombs and were so violent that no one could go through that area. They began screaming at him. Why are you interfering with us, son of God? Have you come here to torture us before God's appointed time? Now, this is obviously a mental health issue. These two guys lived in the tombs at the cemetery. They were known for their great violence, which prevented anyone from coming near. They were not just sick. And they came out taunting Jesus, screaming, and asked if Jesus had come to quote, torture them before the appointed time. Who does that sound like? In today's world, would they have been simply diagnosed as bipolar? Probably so. Matthew 9, 32 and 33 NLT says, when they left, a demon-possessed man who couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. So Jesus cast out the demon and let the man begin to speak. And then the man began to speak. The crowds were amazed. Nothing like this has ever happened in Israel, they exclaimed. Here we have a man who literally couldn't speak. Jesus talked to lots of people, offering encouragement and love, but he didn't do that here. He commanded a demon leave, and then the man could speak. Matthew 12, 22 in LT says, Then a demon-possessed man who was blind and couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. He healed the man so he could both speak and see. Here we have another man who couldn't speak or see, and once Jesus removed the demon, the man could do both. Blindness is one thing, but the inability to speak seems like a link to a mental condition. Again, the demon was the source of the problem, and once removed, the man could speak. We could go on and on and on. There are lots of Bible stories illustrating this, but let me tell you a modern-day mental health problem that the Word of God cured again. Um, I got a call one day from a very conservative Christian man. His daughter had quit going to church 20 years ago. She was very mad at him, and he said she had some health issues. That's all he told me at first. He wanted some steaks. So he came to the house. He got some steaks, uh, and then a couple weeks later, he called me. Now, at the time, I was in Edmond, Oklahoma. I was under a house. By the way, that we'll talk about that another time, but that house had uh, demonic things going on and they had already staked the house and it didn't go away. And so they asked me to come by since I was in Edmond and we found satanic symbols written on the floor joists under the house. And I was actually under the house, marking those off and putting Bible verses there in place of those satanic markers when my phone rang and it was him. And, uh, uh, he said, we've staked her at my daughter's house. She was very excited about doing that. And he said, I wish I could get her to talk to you. He said, uh, I feel like if I could get her to talk to you, I could get her back in church. Uh, and I said, well, let's just pray about that right now. And I'd never done it like this before, but I said, dear God, help Susie to want to talk to me so bad. She can't stand it. In Jesus name. Amen. And I said, she'll want to talk to me. Just call me when she's ready. I said it with full confidence. And I had never done that before. Two weeks later, he called me. He said, you were right. She wants to talk. Is Friday okay? So they came into the house, and they sat down in my living room, this man and his daughter, and she started crying. And she said, Steve, I've been agoraphobic for 22 years. And I said, well, I have been stupid longer than that. What does agoraphobic mean? I don't know what that means. And she said, well, it's a fear of crowds. My, my husband has a home business. Uh, I have this great fear. I stay at home 
Um, he worries about me. So he has a home business so he can kind of keep an eye on me. And I want you to know, I've been to every kind of physician and psychiatrist and psychologist and every kind of medicine that usually helps people with these conditions. Nothing helped until we staked out my house with your Bible verse stakes. And I want you to know something. You're right. God's word is still powerful. Uh, his, her daughter had just gotten engaged and she said she was able to travel three hours by herself to meet her new soon to be in-laws. She could never have done that before. She had such a fear of crowds. She says, I am cured. So in light of today's thought, let me suggest that part of your personal battle plan might be to consider a demonic cause for the many mental health issues we see around us every day. Jesus in his ministry always considered mental health issues to be caused by demons. Why don't we? One of the future episodes I've planned is to interview a trained Christian counselor who feels the same way, that demons are behind many uh, of these mental health issues. And we'll learn from him how it's basically forbidden for licensed counselors to bring up the demonic as a potential reason for unhealthy mental health. Satan loves that this is forbidden. If you'd like to donate to our ministry, you can go to active-faith.org and uh, do that there. Thank you for helping us. See you next time on Battle Plan. We'll be reviewing the racial unity stake verses. These are the stickers we put on around our, our city this year. Racial unity is an important thing. Keep praying because prayer works and God is still on the throne. Uh, God loves you and I love you. Have a great day.